So I want to tell my story to encourage them to look. Yeah. It's not only them. We've all gone through it. And with hard work and honesty, we've gotten this far. So they should take their destiny into their own hands. We will come up and be honest in life. But if you're honest and you're hard working, trust me, God is not as wicked as we all think. God is good to everybody who works hard. That is why He gave us, Jesus Christ gave us the parable of the talent by the rich man who left money with his three servants and came back. One said he was afraid to think of the money. The other said he made profit but not to make. The third one said he doubled it. The significance of that parable is God helps those who help themselves. And it is called the parable of the talent. In simple terms, it means to me, power is happening, so we have to let me from end now. And pens will be another one of the end. The boy said, he says, so my head is not as a person can. If God wanted us to behave like pens, he wouldn't have given us this grace. We are superior human beings created by God to oversee all creations. Therefore, we have to use this grace to work out. We have to be creative. You don't have to wait to get government job. All what I was saying is, you finished, the gentleman brought his certificate to me and application that he is a man for and after that they have to call him. I'm just told him, so he didn't listen to what I said. And of course, maybe that is where he's interested. If I have a way to help him to get into the help. But trust me, we have to be determined of our own destiny. We don't allow the system to determine who we want to be in future. Anybody who relies solely on government and everything will not succeed. Because the pie, the population of 30 million, everybody wants a piece of it. So how much pie to feed everybody to enrich you for the rest of your life? You have to work out. Go outside the normal and do something. And when the gradual experience like I was talking in the school, selling PK chocolate, that transfers it to go. I thought that time, I thought God didn't like me because I see my classmates at the end of the year going to London and the rest, and I was selling PK at the end. You know, but now I realize God was preparing me for something. So we need to tell the story to the young ones that are coming so that they won't make mistakes. I believe all of you are fortunate because our time we didn't get any successful man or our early brothers and sisters even to advise us just a doing. I don't feel sure telling Daniels how I started. It's the motivation to others who hear me. It gives them hope. And look, they can also be somebody. That is what a leader should do. You don't have to keep your success the way you made it in life to yourself. Share your experience. And trust me, I don't expect everybody that came here to take my advice. But even if two takes my advice and turn around their lives, they can also impact their experience in other people that one day they will also change it. The youth of this country, if they are given the same opportunity outside, they excel themselves. It simply means we don't give them opportunity. Because I have a problem, not only with government, but even civil service or any corporation or institution. When they see a young man or a young woman who is vibrant, the boss tries to push them down, keep them away. For us, a white man, when he identifies the potential in you, will rather encourage you. Will rather encourage you. So, it's a problem in this country that the youth are not motivated. And they are always, you know, when I have the same problem, in Ghana, in Ghana here, they misconstrue confidence to be arrogance. 
when we have confidence, all they say is, oh, that guy is arrogant. It makes people timid. They cannot express themselves. Elsewhere, they encourage young men and women like that to be more confident even than what they are. That motivates them to do things that, you know, is unimaginable. I have a belief that all this youth employment, we can reduce it when we prioritize tourism in this country. Look, God has blessed us. Ghana is well positioned in terms of tourism than any other country. That is the center of the world in Kemal. When you go to Moli Park, it's ignored. South Africa, Botswana, Kenya, Uganda, Tanzania are all using this park to attract tourists and they are making money. Look, when you go to my house, tourism is about 50% of the total revenue earned by that country. For they have nice resorts and everything. Here, the oldest Bible that the white man brought into Africa is in the Elimina Catholic Church. And we don't know about it. The oldest Catholic Church in Africa is Elimina Catholic Church. We don't know about it. Look at the, the castle. Last week, I had partners from Guyana. They took them there and they were crying. They didn't stay in Cape Coast. They came back because there's nothing there. If you have a beautiful hotel attached to Elmina Castle or Cape Coast Castle, people go there, they cry, they come and entertain themselves. They stay two, three days. It's revenue generation in Central Region too. What are we doing? Let's go to Panga. Crocodile pond that you put chicken like this. The crocodile will take it and you sit on it. Nowhere in the world you will see that. In Tampa Falls, in Bransa, Mountain Central, Shah Hills, we have a lot of attractive and tourist attractions that we can develop and make money. What are we doing? We wake up here, go to the desert, Sahara, Dubai. It is an individual's dream that is shared among his people. They believe in him. That is why it is working. I want all journalists to believe in me. <clears throat> Don't let us be preachers of doom and inspire ourselves that there's somebody who can make a difference in society. And trust me, me and you, we can develop this country. And we also get trust. Look, example is, when President Ekufuado said uh, return of the year of return, in 2019, from December to January before the tourists left this country, monies that entered this country amounted to two billion dollars. Even we haven't done anything about tourism. Can you imagine if we develop our tourist sites? And when we say tourism, get it straight. Tourism means infrastructure and development. If not, the people will not come. Tourism means security. If there is no peace in this country, tourists will not come. Tourism means neatness, cleanliness. If we have our streets clean and everything, it attracts a lot of people. So the moment you tackle tourism, you tackle all areas of development that will help develop this country. Tourism, the face of this country is airport. Customer service is so poor in our hotels and our airports we need to change the mindset of Guyanese. We don't love our country. Guyanese, we don't love our country. If we do love our country and the systems work, Guyanese go outside Ghana. They are adjured the best workers, the most intelligent. Recently, my daughter had eight Ivy League schools with Plus Stanford and the rest. Is she not a Guyanese girl? In the midst of typical whites, she beat all of them. It is not only her. I have a friend, Sam's daughters, MIT, two girls. They got 0. 5.0. Where everybody is four, the brains are so high that they are up there. 5.0 Ghanaian girls. One of them was the girl who was the first in West Africa from Wesley girls. She talked 
the MIT too. So we have good people. But we need to motivate these youth that are coming here to take their destiny into their own hands. And the other question you ask, we don't believe in our kids. We only put fear in them. So they become coward and timid. They are not able to develop themselves. With me, if you give me power, we are going to conscientize every Ghanaian in this country. I don't believe in the national anthem. I believe in the Yanara Asasisu. As I speak today, when you go home, just listen carefully. The words. All we do in 100 days is that. I don't know your age, but Kenana Champo, when he was there, we were moving from left to right. He used a coin and word. Uh, Defend the And trust me, that time there was only one police station. And we were able to, he was able to do it without asset. Operation feed yourself. Walla to walla sir. Let's do practical things. Operation feed yourself. Who are feeding the southern countries with exporting rice and everything? So we can make Ghana great again. And tell you, challenge me. I'm saying it again that I will use three northern regions, Afran Place and Accra Place, to feed the whole Africa. Thank you very much.